Okay, to start us off with Code to Cloud, to tell you how we've added with GitHub Actions and GitHub Packages a complete DevOps platform to GitHub, please welcome Dana Lawson. Dana? <laughs> Thanks, Nat. I am so excited to be here today to tell you all about how we're bridging the gaps in the software development life cycle. The GitHub engineering team has been hard at work since the last universe when we introduced Actions. And since then, we've also introduced a little thing called Packages. In a previous life as an SA, NA, DA, LMNOP, now a VP, uh, we all have felt the pain of getting our code in production. And we wanted to do it reliably, systematically, because if it touches production, it is production. And now, thanks to GitHub Packages and GitHub Actions, we've enabled some pretty incredible workflows codified in rep inside repositories on GitHub. I think it's a game changer, because as a DevOps engineer at heart, and will always be, this was one of the areas that was just so hard with all those desperate systems to bring them together. So I'm really, really proud of the overwhelming response we've gotten from our community. So let's dive in a little bit about Actions, if it's new to you. Code to Cloud is our complete DevOps workflow made possible by these two new features. Earlier this year, we introduced CI and CD. And with the reception of those products, we shared some really inspirational code. If you're new to get Actions and packages, I'm going to get you up to speed real quick. But before I do that, I wanted to let you all know that starting today, right now, it's available to everyone. That's right. You all can get your actions out there. So what does actions do for you? Well, you can do matrix builds. That means you can do different operating systems, Linux, Max, Windows, with different versions of your code in one click. Well, if you set it up that way. Obviously, I can't, but my team can. <laughs> um, live searchable uh, logs, so you can see where you have those breaks in your build systems. And my favorite is the built-in secret store. It's always a pain to try and get those secrets in when you're trying to push your code out to production. But now having it all in one place, it just makes it so much easier. And what about GitHub packages? It's like the peanut butter and jelly of this amazing sandwich for your code to cloud experience, right? <laughs> Good, people like peanut butter and jelly still. Uh, it's available for public and private repositories. We support NPM, Docker, NuGet, and some others. It works with Actions or any CI that you already have implemented, um, which is awesome. And we also give you those package analytics so you know where that package came from, who wrote it, and who's using it, and where it's at. Now, the best part of Actions in our code to cloud workflow is to apply all the real life situations you're bound to encounter. And some of our community has created some of the most important actions to date that I'm about to tell you about. So get your notebooks out, because you're going to need this one. That's right, an action to order you a pizza. Because I don't know about you, being the lone developer, I needs my pizza. But here's my favorite action that's been created. That's right, you can now use this action to change all the pictures in your repository to my favorite actor, Nick Cage. Have you all actually used that one? It's awesome. But let me get serious for a minute. All of these open port source projects that you're seeing here are using GitHub Actions to power their CI and CD and their general automation. The problems that every team has encountered and are faced by millions more people all over the world are the ones that these teams have encountered. And we all have to get our code into production because that's what we do it for, to share it with the world. And now, some of us do this multiple times a day, million times a month are we deploying, because that is what our customers and our people need. So, a couple of cool companies. I am a huge Pinterest fan, believe it or not. I have a whole dinosaur board. If y'all want to go check it out, look for me. It's there. Um, but just take Pinterest, for instance. They were able to reduce their build time from 80 minutes to 10 with the use of GitHub Actions and packages. And it's just incredible how you can take and connect your workflow in any way that makes sense for you and your business. Like I said, GitHub being the ecosystem and the interconnected community, it's not just about the open source projects. These amazing partners have also built and shared their actions for us to use. So you don't have to start from scratch. And so take a look to go see what you can already reuse, because that's what it's about when we do code. It is the ultimate team support. It's sharing our mind share. But don't take my word for it. To show you more about actions and packages, 
live. Let me introduce my friend and colleague, Jeremy. Thanks, Dana. So who here is ready to jump in and see a live demo of Actions? All right. So what I have here today is a repo. And I've gone ahead and set up a node module in here. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started with CI CD and a bunch of different other workflows with GitHub Actions. So as you heard today, you, everybody's going to see this Actions tab. And you can just go ahead and click on it right there. I'm going to click New Workflow. One of the things that you'll notice is we've automatically detected that this is using JavaScript as its primary language. So we have a set of starter workflows to make it really easy for you to get started. In this case, we're suggesting two of them. One of them is to build and test a Node.js project. This could be an app, a module, a web service you're deploying. Or another one to do CD, which will deploy to GitHub packages as well as NPM. But obviously, GitHub cares about a lot of languages beyond just JavaScript and Node. So we have starter workflows to help you get started with just about anything. We have support for any language, any platform, and any cloud. So if you need to be able to deploy to Google Cloud, to AWS, or to Azure, we have easy workflows to help you get started and get those deployments going. If you're using other languages like Rust, Python, Ruby, Go, we have support for all of those as well. If you click here, you can see the tens of templates that we have for just about every single language you can imagine out there. And these are actually all open source. And we've already had people contributing to these templates as well. But GitHub Actions is more than just CI CD. One of the great things about it is you can automate any event that happens on GitHub. So it could be maybe a new issue created. You want to go ahead and have an automation kickoff and look to determine who that issue should be assigned to or to automatically label it. Maybe you want to close stale issues. Maybe you want to greet new contributors to your repository. We have a set of workflows to help you get that going. And GitHub Actions is really the glue that connects all these experiences together. And it's not just events that happen on GitHub. It's events that happen with any other tool that integrates with GitHub. So maybe Prometheus is generating some health events for you that you then want to kick off a rollback or a redeploy. Again, you can connect that all together with GitHub Actions. So let's scroll back up to the top and actually just get started here with Node. So I'm going to click Set Up This Workflow. And as you would imagine, we went ahead and created a YAML file directly in your repo so you can manage all of your CI, CD, and configuration right as code. You'll notice that this template gets you set up with a matrix build, as Dana talked about a second ago. I'm testing across multiple different versions of Node. I'm testing on Linux and then doing what you expect. We check out the code, set up the environment, and run some scripts directly in line. But if you're like me, has anybody ever made a mistake in YAML? Maybe you've gotten the spacing wrong, haven't got it all right. Well, we have come to your rescue. One of the things you'll notice is we've added autocomplete directly into the editor, so you can easily learn our YAML syntax and how to go ahead and edit that. So maybe instead of running directly on a Linux VM, maybe I want to do a container. I can specify my image and have that all done right there directly in the editor. But as Dana was saying, we now have over 1,200 actions people have added. And over here on the right-hand side, maybe you don't always want to build it yourself, because we want to stand on the shoulder of giants, just like we do with open source. We want workflows to be the same way. You can go ahead and see many of the different popular uh, actions right here, and go ahead and search for them. Maybe I want to deploy to Kubernetes. You can see there's multiple different actions, different partners, and people have contributed. Maybe I want to use Chrome for headless testing, or I want to deploy uh, an extension uh, to the Chrome store, or to Firefox, or a WordPress plugin. The community has created tons of extensions to be able to automate all these CI CD scenarios and a lot more. Maybe just sending a Slack message or sending something off on Twilio. It's all supported right there. And also, we have an easy link to documentation right here, so it's even easier to get started. Let's go ahead and go ahead and commit this file. and start a pull request. So just like you would imagine, as soon as the pull request is created, we have actually automatically gone ahead and kicked off CI, just like you would expect. So the merge box right in your pull request is right there. You can see we're going ahead and queuing up those three simultaneous builds, and they're already in progress. So let's go over here, and just like you can have a conversation, I can just go over to this checks tab. And right when I'm there, you'll see live streaming logs directly in GitHub. Come on. There we go. You can see we have emoji. We have syntax highlighting, everything that you expect. Maybe if there was a failure, I want to copy a link right to this line and share it with someone. That makes it really easy to go do that. 
We have search directly in there as well if I want to search through all my logs. And I can see all these jobs that quickly pass because we have really fast hosted runners that are free for all public repos. Now let's go over and look at a little bit more complicated setup here. That was kind of a starter setup. I'll go over to this other one. This is the same project. I've just kind of built a larger CI CD workflow in it. One of the things you'll notice is, again, like we talked about before, you can have multiple different events. So in this case, I'm looking at a pull request that's targeting a master branch. You have lots of different filtering options on here, whether you want to include branches, exclude branches, um, have matching specific patterns. Down below here, I have a couple different jobs. So I have this build job that's kicking off a matrix. But this matrix is even larger. So it's not just testing across multiple node versions. It's multiplying that by all these different operating systems as well. So I'll actually have 12 different builds kicked off simultaneously. Each one of these operating systems will have three different builds. So now you can get that full parallel test coverage all at once right on GitHub. And I'm also happy to announce that we have self-hosted runner support now directly in there. So if you want to be able to run on your own hardware, that is all supported directly in GitHub. And it's completely free of charge because you're already paying for the hardware yourself. Whether or not you want a VM in the cloud, or you're using on-prem hardware, or you just want to run it on a Raspberry Pi, we have support for everything. Down below here, you'll notice that I'm doing a dual publish. So I'm also publishing to NPM. And then I'm also publishing to GitHub Packages. And you'll also see here, obviously, I need an auth token if I want to deploy to NPM. So we now have a secret store built directly into every single GitHub repository. And all you have to do is jump over to settings and configure those secrets nice and easily. But now let's look at what happens when I actually go ahead and run this. So let's go over here. And we can go to Actions. And just like you would expect on the Actions tab, once you've been using it for a while, you have lots of different builds that have been triggered, everything that you would expect, great filtering options. Let me jump down here. And you can go ahead and see, earlier today, I ran all these tests in parallel. They've all deployed successfully. We've also went ahead and published this package. So I'm going to jump over here and show you the package that was deployed. And again, we have GitHub packages. So right next to your code, right next to that repository, you can have your whole CI and then uh, your CD and your packages right there. So in this case, I can click on Fib Tools. And I can see how easy it is to get started. I can see the readme. I can see some stats, the different versions, everything that you would expect to see for a package that you're publishing. I can even go up to the organization and see all the different packages that this organization is doing. And we have support for many different languages, um, just as Dana was saying, whether it be Docker, Maven, Gradle, NuGet, NPM, Ruby Gems. You can publish lots of different types of packages and then share that code. But I know one of the things that matters the most to you is you really want to be able to save your time. So I'm also happy to say we now have caching support built directly into GitHub Actions. <laughs> it's just as easy as going ahead and adding um, a simple caching action on there. And I always feel like the proof is in the pudding when you look at a real repo. So recently, Rails actually has been using uh, GitHub Actions. And they've switched over to now using caching. So you'll notice up here it takes about six and a half minutes. Once they added the caching action, now down to one and a half minutes. That's a five minute reduction in their builds. <laughs> and this isn't just for Ruby. You can cache anything that you need, any packages that you have from any language, binary outputs, anything like that. But finally, it's not just all about packages. You can also deploy to the cloud as well. So what I did here was I created a multi-cloud deployment. As you would expect, I have a couple different workflows that can deploy to Google, Amazon, and Azure, all right there. And then also, right in my pull request, I can actually see the environments that these are going to as well. So you can get one-click access right to that environment right from the pull request. Then if I go back over to code, you'll notice just like your packages are there, your pull requests, everything else that you expect, you'll notice we now have a set of environments right there as well. So I can see a history, an activity log of all the different deployments that I've done to all my different environments as well. So let's jump back to the slides. So that gives you a quick look at everything that we've been doing recently. You know, recently, we just announced artifact caching, as well as self-hosted runners with ARM support and x86 support as well. With packages, you saw that we now have Gradle packages in addition to everything else I showed. And we also have proxy support. So if you want to port uh, your NPM RC directly to GitHub packages, we'll go ahead and look on GitHub packages if there's something. If not, we'll fall back and grab it from NPM directly. And if you want to learn more about what's going on with actions and packages, feel free to stay right here in this room. And Samina and I are doing a talk immediately afterward. Thank you very much. Thank you.